Hi, my name is Michelle Diassi, and this is the third part of the Market Analysis Series, Shopping the Competition. In the first and second parts of the Market Analysis Series, we reviewed how to find and locate your competitors and put them on a map, and also how to determine what the demand in your area is. Today, we're going to learn how to shop the competition and find out what it is you're up against in your market. Some of the things we're going to overview today are the importance of shopping the competition, what you should be shopping, organizing your findings, shopping methods, are the rents in your market high enough, and how to determine the occupancy levels of your competitors. Now, the importance of shopping competition is that it's going to help you to determine your facility's ability to compete in the market. For instance, if you go into a secondary market and find out that all of the facilities there are Class B facilities, no security around the perimeter, uh, the kind of facilities that you may not want to store your belongings in, then you know that you're going to have an advantage on that market. However, if you're thinking of building maybe a completely non-climate controlled facility and you go into a market like Phoenix, Arizona, for instance, you find out that there's a lot more climate controlled offer and uh, maybe you're wanting to up what you're going to offer when you go into that market based on what you find. The other, the other thing that's really important when shopping your competition is rent determination. When you're shopping your competitors, you're going to find out what their rents are. This is going to help you set what your rents for your facility will be. In addition to setting the rents, this is also going to determine how much revenue your facility will make. The last and one of the most important things that you'll find when shopping the competition is the occupancy information. Now, when finding out the occupancy, it's very rare that you're going to get an exact count of the percentage that the facility is occupied, but you can get a pretty good idea. Now, when you do this, this is going to aid in configuring the amount of time that your facility will take until it reaches stabilized occupancy. For instance, let's say that there's a facility right down the road that's 100,000 square feet, and you find out that they've been open for two years and they're currently 80% occupied. Well, that's going to tell you that once you get your facility in the market, in addition to your facility leasing up, that 100,000 square foot facility still has 20,000 more feet that they're going to be needing to lease. So that's good information for you to think about when you're configuring what kind of demand is in that market as well. Also, the amount of occupancy denotes the state of the market. For instance, if every facility that you go to, you're finding that they're all 60 to 70 percent occupied or 50 to 60 percent occupied, maybe not the market for you to build in right now. Now I'm going to review what you should be shopping when you go to shop your competitors. The first and most important thing is to find out what the rents are. You're going to be looking for climate controlled rents and non-climate controlled rents. In addition, you're also going to want to find out the amenities that the facility offers, what kind of security they have, the products and services that they offer, and a general property description. Now, in order to organize your findings, you're going to need to create some tables. This first one is a perfect example of how you can organize the rents. As you can see, we have it separated out into non-climate and climate controlled units. I also have it separated down in the rows by 5x5, five 5x10, by five, five by 7.5x10, 10x10, 10x15, 10x20, 10x25, and 10x30 sized units. These are the average unit sizes that I would want in my facility. If you're thinking about doing sizes like these, by all means, find out what those cost in your neighboring facilities. If you're thinking about doing slightly different unit mix, maybe going on an 8 or a 12 scale, then look for facilities that are similar to that. The next thing that you're going to look at are the type of amenities that the facility offers. You can see that we have it separated out into the subject property, our property, and facility X. We want to do a side-by-side -side comparison to see what we will be offering versus what the competitor is going to offer. For instance, are they going to have an on-site resident manager? Is there a manager living on the property? Does it have 24-hour access? Are the drives lighted at night? Do they have pest control? Are the aisles wide enough so that you can turn your car effectively? Do they have a conveniently located trash container? Do the doors easily slide up? Are there loading carts? Public restrooms? Do they offer both residential and commercial leasing? 
Do they have month-to-month -month or long-term leasing contracts? Do they have security monitors, strong exterior fencing? And do they have an entry control system by personal gate code? Next, you want to look at security. Here, we're looking at the type of security that's in the climate control buildings. Again, still comparing it side to side between the subject property and the competitor. Does the climate control facility have a secondary lock system? Meaning, after you get in with your personal gate code, do you have to put your code in again to get into the climate control building? Do they have motion sensor lighting? When you walk down the hall, does the lights come on? Do they have intercoms? Are there concave mirrors so that you can see around the corners? Next, you want to look at your products and services. Is the competitor offering both non-climate and climate controlled units? Are they offering RV and boat storage? Moving supplies and boxes? Shelving? Moving trucks? Or truck rental? The last thing that you want to do is create a summary for the property description. What was the original year that your competitor was built? Have they added on any phases since then? What class is the property? Is it an A, a B, or a C? Now a class A property would be a very high-end, recently built facility. They offer both climate and non-climate control. They have a clean interior and exterior. They have a manager on site, not necessarily a resident manager, but a manager present, and very high-tech security. A B-class property maybe doesn't have climate control, uh, a little bit more worn on the exterior, maybe a little bit on the interior, probably built within the last five to ten years. Uh, still has security, but not as high-tech as a Class A. And a Class C is just a plain dog. It's probably anywhere from 15 to 20 to 30 years old. Uh, very little security, possibly a chain-link fence. These are the properties that if you're building a brand new property, you don't really need to worry about. They're not exactly in your market. You also need to take into consideration how far the competitor is from your property. Also the estimated size and current occupancy rate. Now things like the estimated size and the distance and the year that it was built were all found in our first lesson. You can find the year that it was built and the estimated size on the property records uh, from the county appraisal district. If you need to go back and look on the first lesson, I would do so. Now we're going to review the different shopping methods that you can use. The first and easiest way to shop a competitor is to go on their website if they have one. There are times when I've been on a competitor's website and they have everything listed on there. They have how many units they have left in each size, they have the price, anything that you need to know, their security. There are some websites that that's all you will ever need to go to in order to find out your information on that property. Other websites, you may have to dig a little bit more and possibly call the facility. Here we have an example of a call placed to a possible competitor. Thank you for calling Self Storage. This is Peter speaking. How may I help you? Hi. Um, I wanted to find out how much your units cost. Sure. Uh, what size were you looking for? Um, I'm not really sure yet. We are, we're moving from kind of a bigger house. Uh, into a smaller apartment and so we are going to need to put, we're not sure what's going to go in and what's going to going to go into storage, if you know what I mean. Okay, so well, it, I mean, I can give you a couple different sizes. Um, do you know exactly what you're storing or? Well, see, here's one of the things is that we have a sectional couch and so if it fits in the apartment, then we're going to, we're going to keep it in the apartment, but if it doesn't, then we'll have to store it um, and then we've got a couple of things. So okay. um, I'm not sure exactly how much stuff, like I said. A couple bedrooms? I mean, just a one bedroom? Um, yeah, probably at least, at least one bedroom, okay. I'd say. Okay, cool. Well, um, for that type of size of an apartment, uh, you're probably looking at a 5x10 uh, or a 10x10 10 10 or a 10x15. Um, that's going to be your best fit size-wise. Okay, how, how much are those? Well, it really depends um, if it's going to be climate controlled or non-climate controlled. Um, what that means is uh, it's uh, temperature regulated and um, it, it, uh, it helps if you have like any antiques or electronics, anything that is going to be sensitive to the temperature, you'd want to okay. put it um, 
and climate controlled. But uh, as far as the cost on those for a 5x10, which is, um, of course, 50 square feet in size, for the non-climate, you're looking at about $50 um, a month, whereas the climate controlled is about $75 per month. Okay. Um, 10 by 10, it's uh, 100 square feet, so, you know, double the size, of course, um, and it's only $80 for non-climate controlled and um, 110 for climate controlled. Okay. And um, for the 10 by 15, um, which, of course, is 150 square feet, uh, you're looking at about $125 for non-climate controlled and about $170 uh, for climate controlled. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. So um, are you um you looking to move in anytime soon or? Um, actually, we're just kind of calling around right now. We're not going to be moving uh, until about two months from now. Okay. Well, um, you will want to hurry if you can because uh, we we have a few 10 by 10s left and we only have one 10 by 15 left. Um, really? In the okay. uh, climate controlled. So uh, um, we have a couple more cl uh, non-climate controlled, but the. Uh, climate controlled only one ten by fifteen. So if you want that, you'll want to jump on that if you can. And you um, said you've got a few of the ten by tens. You said. Yeah, there's a few of the ten by tens. Um, uh, let me look at my sheet here. Uh, let's see, it's um about uh eight or nine left. Um, it's, do you think uh, that it's, it's gonna nine, so. nine? Do you think that in two months they'll be gone, or is it just kind of luck of the draw? Well, you know they um. They go pretty quick, but um, I, you know, we we usually have at least five or so. So, um, okay. okay. I mean, you should be safe there, but you will want to hurry if you want to get that 10 by 15 climate control. So. Okay. Well, um, I'll probably talk with my husband and just try and figure out if uh, that's the price range they want, and then I'll give you a call back. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Um, okay. Thank forward, you. Uh, look forward to the call. I uh, thank you for calling. Thank you so much. I appreciate everything. Thanks. Bye-bye. Now, as you can see, it's very important to have a backstory in mind when you're calling your competition. For instance, I had a sectional couch. That enabled me to say, oh, I'm not sure what type of unit I need, uh, thereby giving him more incentive to give me more unit prices. The more information you can get while on the phone, the better. Uh, if you notice, when he was giving me the prices of the different size units, he was also telling me how many were left. He said there's a few 10 by 10s, one 10 by 15 climate, a few non-climates, and uh, just a few 5 by 10s. And uh, there were nine 10 by 10s left. This tells you so much about their occupancy. Again, you have to be listening for these pieces of information. Now, the fact that he had those eight or nine 10 by 10s and only one 10 by 15 and a few 5 by 10s leads me to believe that he's probably around 80 to 85 percent occupied. Now if I wanted to get a better indicator of that, I would actually have to go and physically shop the competition. This is a video example of what it looks like when you're at the facility shopping the competition. the exterior. Does this look like a facility that you would like to store your belongings? What is the damage? Now as you can see, when we pull up, we see some of the amenities that this facility offers. For instance, the We Sell Boxes. Clearly, boxes, packing supplies are part of what this facility will give you.
Now, when talking to the manager, it's best to be as vague as possible. That way you can get a better idea of what the facility offers as well as the different prices. If they ask you to narrow it down to two or three sizes, it's best to find out how much the 10 by 10s, 5 by 10s, and 10 by 15s are. Not really. I just, I don't really know too much. I'm just trying to kind of figure out. Do you? Yeah, well, well let me show you some of the sizes that we have. Um, what, what are you trying to store in the first place? Um, well, see, we're moving from Arizona to here. Okay. And we, like, we're moving out of the house and into an apartment, and so we're not really sure how much of the stuff that's in the house is going to fit into the apartment, okay. if that makes sense. Okay. Um, well, let me just tell you that um, our most standard, most popular unit is going to be a 10 by 10. Um, that's like this. It's basically going to be about the size of uh, what you have in a one bedroom apartment. Um, you want to go a little smaller than that, you can go down to a 5 by 10 and that's going to be pretty much the size of a large walk-in closet. Um, we can go up, we can go to a 10 by 15 um, and we've got both climate controlled and non-climate controlled units. So if you need something that's going to need temperature control like leather or pictures or paper or anything like that, then you're going to want to do something climate controlled. If not, if it's just stuff you put in the garage, then uh, you can just do a non-climate control. But anyway, these are the basic sizes. Um, obviously we have bigger sizes, but it sounds like you're going to need something um, in that range. So um, let me see what we've got available. Actually, you can take this. Um, it's always a good thing to walk away with literature. Not only will it help you to organize your findings, but it's also good when finding out the comparison between your facility and your competitor. And we are going to, um, we've got quite a, a few different units available, so I can, uh, I can go out there and show you if you want to take a ride in a golf cart. Um, we can go look at some of these units and maybe look at a 10 by 10 and see if that's what you're going to need. So. Okay, um, yeah. how much is it to, how much are the, the yeah. ones that you mentioned? Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, this next part is very important. There's been more than one occasion where a manager will pull out their vacancy sheet in order to figure out which units they have available. While they're looking through their sheet, this is the time that you can use to count as quickly as possible how many units that they still have that are vacant. While this manager is talking, I actually counted approximately 48 units. Well, um, our 10 by 10s uh, with just drive up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, so like our 10 by 10s with drive up access, which is going to be outside. Um, are going to be seventy dollars a month. Okay. Um, if you want to go climate control at that rate, then that's going to be um, one ten. So it's, it's so for seventy. Climate, it's seventy. Mm -hmm. And then one ten for climate control. Okay. And then I can give you the other prices of those units too. Or we can yeah, just, no, that'd be good. Okay, I just cool. I need to find out as much as I can sure, on the sure. town. Um, the five by tens are going for forty six for non climate and sixty eight for climate. 68 for climate. 68 for climate, and then okay. the 10 by 15s uh, go from, we actually just have, uh, in these we just have the non-climates uh, available, so 89 for those okay. non-climates. And you are you don't have any of the, the climate control left? Um, on that one, um, not right this second. Okay. So we're all out of those. Um, what are the odds that one of these is going to come available anytime soon, just in case? Well, when are you looking to move in? How soon is it? Um, actually, not for another two months. We, okay. uh, I'm just kind of scouting right yeah. now. I'm only in town for a little while, so. All right. Well, the thing is that on the 10 by 15s, if I'm remembering correctly, I think we have um, somebody moving out in the next week or so. Um, so if you don't mind um, moving in a little early, then um, then we can probably get you set up with something very soon. If there aren't any guarantees. Uh, they. It might open up, it might not, so okay. we, can, we can just see if okay. that happens. But um, if you want to go take a look at a unit, uh, we can go ahead and do that. Yeah, no, let's do that. Okay, great. Okay, All right, follow me. Drive to the facility can be a very effective time for this guy. Managers love to brag about their facility. You can get all sorts of information out of them during that time, such as the size of the facility, the occupancy, different amenities they offer. All of this is valuable information. We'll go see if we've got one of these units available.
Yeah, it's like got about 68,000 square feet here. So oh, wow. it is pretty large. All right, I think we've got a unit right over here that we can look at. As you can see, one of the best things that you can do while driving around the facility is to count doors. Now, you don't necessarily need to count every door. You're looking for the doors with or without locks on them. If this looks like it's a pretty occupied facility, then you want to look for the doors that do not have locks on them. If the facility looks vacant, then try and count the doors that have locks on them. Um, as you can see, about a one bedroom apartment, you can stack things upward. So you think this will be about good for what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, this looks pretty good. Okay, so, cool, yeah. cool. All right, well, let's go back to the office. Now your main objective when visiting a facility is to just get an overall sense of that facility. When you're there, take pictures, obviously not when you're with the manager, but maybe go across the street and take a few pictures of the facility so that you'll remember the different amenities they offer. Uh, make sure that you're checking to see if they have a entry controlled gate, if their climate controlled uh, part of their facility has a security code. Basically, you want to find out as much as you possibly can while you're still on the premise. Now, one of the last things we're going to need to look at is are your rents high enough in your market? Your rents, as I mentioned earlier, will justify your ability to build in the market, being that your rents are going to create your revenue. This is going to tell you how much you can pay for a piece of land in the market. Now, if your rents are too low, it may not cover the cost to buy the land or build the property you have to remember that you're taking into account all of the costs when you're generating your revenue. You have to think about what it's going to cost for your construction, what your steel is going to cost, what your development is going to cost. All of these things are covered in greater depth in our economic feasibility lesson. Now, if the rents are high, this is going to give you a good basis for if your facility has the ability to compete in the market. For instance, let's say that you enter the market and the rents are very high, and you can possibly go below those rents because of what you're paying for the land. That works out well for you. You're giving yourself a competitive edge over the rest of the people in that market because you can get in right below their prices. Now the last and most important piece of information that you need to gather is probably the most difficult. Determine the occupancy level of your competitors. The first thing that you should do is check the website. Like I said earlier, there are some websites that will have the units listed that they still have available, or it will tell you which units they're completely out of. The next thing to do is to listen to the manager. Like we saw in the phone call, some managers will give away keywords that will help you to determine how full they are. Now, I've been asked before, how do I, how, what, if, what if they know that I'm shopping them? Well, if they know that you're being, they're being shopped, they're going to tell you that they have nobody. No one wants to rent at my facility. The business is horrible here. Because obviously, would you want to build in a market where business is horrible? No. So if they're telling you that they're full, or they only have a few left, or they give you an exact over 67%, they're probably telling you the truth, and they don't realize they're being shopped. Now, one of the other things that you can do, we saw in the video, you should look around the office. In the video, I read the, rent, I read the unit sheet. One of the things that has also been made available when I've done my shopping and competition was that some competitors have a dry erase board sitting on their wall with every unit listed that they still have available. They do this so that they can easily see what units they can give out to new customers. While I was there, I quickly counted how many units they had and did some math work when I got home, found out what their occupancy was. Now the last thing that you can do is something that you also saw in the, in the video, count the locks. When you're counting the locks, it's probably better to count which locks are not there. 
you want to count how many unoccupied units they have. Now, the unoccupied units are still going to have a semblance of a lock, but it's not going to be a big padlock. It's just going to be a paperclip looking lock. These are what you need to look for. Thank you so much for viewing this lesson. I hope that you've learned a lot about how to shop your competitors, and if you were able to see the whole series, a general overview of market analysis. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at michelle at noahsgp.com. Thank you.